So SKT, hi. Thank you for inviting us down to uh, KISS. Uh, no worries, man. Have you been? Busy? Yeah, really full on at the moment. Really busy. Um, been working uh, at the beginning of the year on a lot of productions and then just gearing up for summer now. Yeah, amazing. You got much stuff coming up for summer? Or? Yeah, well, I've just released a, um, a track called Poison, uh, which samples a Bell Div DeVoe classic um, back, from the, um, back from the 80s. You have your own label, don't you, Up Tempo? Yeah. Have you got a lot of stuff coming up on that for the uh, summer? Yeah, we're signing, we're signing a lot, a lot of releases that are forthcoming for, for summer uh, from some really cool uh, new emer emerging artists um, that are doing their thing. Um, and yeah, we've got releases scheduled from June right the way through to September. Okay, really good. Yeah. Is there anyone we should be particularly looking forward to hearing stuff from? Um, there's a couple of artists, a guy called Harry Lay, um, a guy called Sankar, uh, Riaz Danani, uh, loads, literally amazing, loads. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So, you probably get asked this question quite a lot. In terms of young producers saying, oh, how can I get to your to where you are now? Is there one mistake you see a lot of young DJs and producers making? How, and sort of, what can you say to them to, say, to make sure they avoid it? I think the main thing for me is a lot of people have always asked me, how did I get to where I am now and like literally it's just been hard work mm. like I've never I've never really had an inside connection or link or anyone that's kind of helped me um, in any way like I've just literally just worked and worked and worked and put my music out there mm. and like stuff has always seemed to come to me so I just say to like young producers and people out there that are uh, trying to break through just work and do yeah. what you love as well <clears throat> because I find a lot of the time people tend to be influenced by who they want to be and they're not necessarily making what could right, yeah. be potentially them if that makes sense and I've always found with my music to the best the best tracks that I've made always ones where I've just done what I've wanted to do and not try to think, overthink them too much, if that yeah. makes sense. We've been trying to pick our brains about your actual name, DJ SKT. Mm. Is it initials or does it stand for certain? Initials, yeah. Is it value? Yeah. yeah, okay, lovely. What are, in fact, your initials? I, you know what, I've never given away my name. Have you not? No. Well, I'm it. well, we're good on you for keeping them up. I just, I, it was one of those things where I was like, let's see how long I can keep it. Yeah. But then you'll probably get comments on this video, like, what's that name? Yeah, so, in terms of your sort of genre hopping, yeah. listening to a lot of your shows, you kind of go from the sort of the garagey sound to the deep to the house. And yeah. what, where did your inspiration come from that? Because a lot of DJs do genre hop, but why, why do you do it the way you do? Because you do it in a very unique style. In terms of genre hop, I wouldn't call it like genre hopping. I'd call it like a fusion. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, like growing up, I, I listened to a lot of garage. You know, from like um, Chicago house into like the kind of early US garage stuff to more kind of two step uh, type of stuff. So I like heavy drums, I like kind of garagey drums, but then I also like, you know, sometimes funky bass lines or really metallic big heavy bass lines. So I think it's for me, it's just a fusion of, of everything that I like. And you know, I love vocals as well. I love, um, you know, even going back, I love listening to kind of old school R and B, soul, and you know, to bring an element of that into into the music as well. Um, if I can do that, then um, you know, I always, again, like I said earlier, with you know, people, producers that are trying to break through. For me, it's about trying to create something new and exciting and different, and that doesn't sound like anything else. Yeah. And um, that's what's gonna kind of, for me, that's what's gonna kind of make you stand out. And it could be in a good way or a bad way, but that's, that's you know, for me, that's the, the best way to um, to be, it's kind of um, different. So delving into more your sort of production side, yeah. Take Me Away was such a massive hit and it always goes off in the club. Yeah. What was it like to sort of hear that blow up on the, uh, in the radio scene? It was crazy because we were gonna put that as, out as a free download. Really? So literally, we were just gonna put it up on my SoundCloud and be like, "Hey, here's a free download." Mm. And I did the track initially just to play in my DJ sets, um, and the response when I was playing it out was crazy. Mm. 
And that's when we started thinking like, wow, like we gave it to a few DJs and you know, the reaction was like, wow, we love this. Um, and then Defected um, Records got in touch and um, I went for a meeting with them, played them a bunch of tracks and I had to take me away there as well. And I didn't really think Defected, I wasn't too sure whether they'd like it. Yeah. So I, w I wasn't gonna play it to them, but I thought, hey, ha have a listen to this, see what you think. And they heard it and loved it. Right. And it kind of went from there and just um, Radio 1 just loved it and just, it. just just started playing it and they even made their own like radio edit yeah, which was which was crazy so I, it was what I loved about it was it wasn't something that was designed to go into the charts or be a chart track it was just meant as like a, a club club track so when you were kind of early in your DJ career at what point did you think actually I'm going to chuck in the towel with the day job and sort of hand it over to DJ I think it just started getting too busy like I was um, I was running like a separate business and a separate co uh, company with, with my brother and um, that was all going really well but I was kind of doing my day, day job and then doing remixes um, for major labels in the night and it was literally I was working like 24 hours um, sometimes I just I just wouldn't sleep then head straight back into work work come home and um, it just got to the point where you know take me away and with everything probably about probably about two years now that like, I just had to kind of make the decision of kind of make the commitment to this is what I've always wanted to do what I love doing and I'm gonna go for it so so in terms of your production if you had to make a track an EP or an album with, with any producer artist vocalist whoever who yeah would Singer wise, definitely Amy Winehouse. Like I've always loved her, the kind of truthfulness behind what, um, you know, her music's kind of real. Like a lot of a lot of like that kind of stuff that you hear nowadays is written by other people and doesn't really have any relevance to the artist. And she was someone who was really talented, and um, I'd have loved to have worked with her. Drake is someone that I like as well, yeah. and he'd be I I can I can see him doing something in the genre of house like very soon with what he's doing and um, I can kind of see the Americans are really really getting into into like the house and the house sound at the moment so that that could be an interesting collab like yeah. again it's kind of outside the box it's not not something that you typically think of doing but I think it might sound quite cool okay so you were absolutely manic last summer yeah going up summer where were your favourite gigs and sort of for what reasons? Um, one of my highlights for last year was um, Glastonbury. I got to play uh, Glastonbury on the red stage, which was really, really cool. Yeah. It was my first time at Glastonbury as well. Um, and yeah, that was just crazy. Um, also did uh, Creamfields. Um, we Are Festival, I played at um, the MK Area 10 stage and um, I actually closed for um, for the festival and for um, for MK, which was um, a really cool experience. Um, and then yeah, I was out in Ibiza as well for Defected um, at Amnesia, which was for me one of the best clubs over there. This summer I'm out at um, Amnesia playing for Cream. I'm doing the opening party with the Fatboy Slim, and also the um, boat party beforehand, which cool. should be like yeah. really really crazy. I'm also over at Eden um, for a night called Audio Circuit and I'll be out there every other week playing, playing there as well. Yeah. So yeah, this summer's looking like really, really crazy, crazy busy. Now over your career you've probably you've played a whole spectrum in terms of capacity of sort of venues. So yeah. You've played the, the massive great super clubs like Amnesia and then you will be playing 33 Hertz which is a famously known for being ridiculously intimate. Yeah. yeah. It's really strong vibes. You've got perks and you've got sort of you've got bad things about both. What are the differences and what do you prefer? I think the, the small intimate gigs are the ones that I really love because you can connect a lot better with the crowd yeah. and the, the people that actually come are usually more into exactly what you're about. So, yeah. um, whereas playing in front of like 40,000 people on a main stage, then they're there to be entertained as opposed to 
come to see you as an artist. So the small intimate gigs I really love because often they're they're, they're the best vibe. I've heard a lot about 33 Hertz from um, from other artists, and I'm looking forward to playing it. Man. Uh, in terms of the sort of house music scene, you've got loads of different sort of subgenres and different types of house music coming through. What would you yeah. say is not getting the recognition you think it deserves? See, for me, I always look at house music as dance music and just dance music as house music, if that makes sense. Like, I don't like subgenres and often a sound or something gets born and then it gets split and turned into different subgenres and I think for me I just love house and I just love I just love music. I just love dance music as a, as a whole apart from EDM. Yes. Which I don't class as music. I don't know if that's a bit harsh but like for me dance music is dance music. And um, you know whether it's kind of vocal, underground, dubby, techy, minimal. I love everything. So instead of um, uh, being being a DJ, like that, the amazing skills you're known as doing, what would you, what what other sort of occupation would you want to sort of pursue instead of a DJ? Apart from a DJ. I don't know, I mean, like since 13, like music's kind of just been my life and it's been what I've, I've done kind of in my spare time, you know, um, just throughout my whole life. So I can't, can't really imagine my life without music in a way. I don't know what I would be doing now if it wasn't for music. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I wouldn't like to think either. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So when you get a brief moment to kind of kick back and relax mm -hmm. when you're not flying around the world or matching up clubs, what do you do to kind of take your mind away from the music and such? What do you kind of do in your spare time? Usually music. Yeah. Like literally at the moment it's just 24 7. 24 7 yeah. I mean, if I do chill, you know, I'll put Netflix on and yeah. maybe watch a movie and then 20 minutes within watching the movie, my phone will go and I have to pick it up and then the movie's ruined. So it, at the moment, I haven't really had that much um, downtime. The last kind of 18 months to two years have just been completely full up and, and non-stop. But I kind of, I, I, I live and breathe it, so I love it. So it's not, it's not really something that I want to stop doing, if that makes sense. So for all, all these gigs you played, all the festivals, if you could single out one night, or either as an attendee or, or as on the decks, what would it be and where would it be? I think it would be the first time I played at Amnesia for Defected Records um, last year. I mean, for many kind of DJ producers, you know, being with like a really, a really good label and playing at like one of the most renowned clubs in the world is an ambition that I've had since I was like 13. So to be there in that moment was kind of a bit surreal um, and I guess overwhelming in a way, but I'm back there this year, so yeah, okay. let's do it all over again. I mean, I suppose for many sort of producers and DJs, it's kind of a pinnacle of like your aspiration to play yeah. if they want the super clubs. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Have, yeah that's just, so if you kind of had an option to timeline everything out in terms of house music and the progression, mm. um, where would you think it would stand within five years? I don't know, I think music as a whole, and especially house music, dance music, like constantly evolves. And in terms of like my production and what I do, I always want to constantly evolve. I don't want to be making the same sounding stuff like over and over again. And I think some people can get caught up, not even just in house, but in any, um, any type of genre. Um, and you know, even if you look at, um, Hip hop and R&B, like people that I've grown up listening to, like Timberland, has always created a sound or some kind of um, some kind of some kind of sound. It was like a watermark saying this is a Timberland track. Yeah, and you kind of get to know a Timberland production, but then he's always switched it up. Yeah, and like even to you know today he's still kind of one of the best producers, and the same with like Pharrell and the Neptunes. And um, I kind of look at those guys and, and the way that they've they've 
kept evolving and always been very experimental. Um, and you can draw that back to the house and look at similar artists who have done the same thing. Um, and for me, it's important to always add new aspects and um, think outside the box and just make make something that stands out. Yeah, of course. And that's 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 what I always try and try and do. And the more different influences I can bring in, whether it's from like reggae, soul hip-hop into a big dance melting pot, the better. So you mentioned a few names there that would have had the only option of printing onto vinyl. Do you think that sort of, as you've grown up entering these uh, DMC competitions, do you think they were sort of being, having, you having to learn on vinyl, do you think that's sort of helped you understand the craft of DJing more to these guys who are coming in straight onto the DJs? Yeah, I mean, I think definitely learn, learning and coming from like the vinyl era and learning how to mix on turntables um, was definitely its own skill set um, compared to like nowadays DJing on CDJs or um, a laptop or something like that. It's it's almost completely different. Unfortunately, like the um, the vinyl kind of era and DJs playing on vinyl, although there has been a bit of a, uh, a resurgence, it's not, I think most DJs now are just literally MP3, laptop, USB, um, but definitely for me, the art and the skill of um, turntablism and, and learning how to mix vinyl on turntables is something that I love, but wouldn't really come in handy nowadays. But I'd still go into my bedroom and pull out finals and mix yeah, yeah. mix and have fun but it's 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 almost like a bit of a lost art form which is is, is a shame but you know it's like anything. This is DJ SKT and you can catch me on the 14th of May down at 33 Hertz Guildford. I'll see you there.